Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and we've got another really challenging problem on the harder end of what you're going to see um, on your GED math test. So let's take a look. It says factor out the greatest common factor of the algebraic expression below. Factor out. So factoring is a really interesting concept. To factor is very similar to the idea of division. Um, for example, if I were to factor out the number 6, one way I could do that, I'm just starting with a really simple example, is I could say that 6 is the same as 2 times 3. And what I've done here is I've factored it out. I've pulled it apart into the things that multiply together to make 6. Um, now, this isn't the only way to factor out that number. A lot of you guys know that 6 is also like 1 times 6. There's multiple ways. Okay, So that's what I mean by factor. So when I think of factor, I think of it like the opposite of multiplication. It's like pulling something that's already been multiplied back apart into its individual factors. Okay, that's what that means there. So you can see this um, algebraic expression here. It asks you to factor. It's a nice, ugly, nasty one. 12x to the fifth power plus 30x squared minus 6x. Now, there is a fast way to do this problem that takes a while to learn, but once you learn it, it's fast. That's just the factoring way. Or there's a cheat method. I'm going to totally use a cheat method today. Um, now, don't get me wrong. If you were in my um, college algebra class, I would totally teach you all the different kinds of factoring. We would take six weeks, weeks to do it. We would have a factoring flow chart so you knew when to do the different types of factoring, and you would be a factoring master. But when I'm prepping for the GED, which has only a couple of factoring problems, and they're usually multiple choice, I often teach my students to cheat by working backwards. A great test-taking method is if you don't know how to work forwards, work backwards. And we said factoring was the opposite of multiplying. So instead of factoring this expression right up here and pulling out that uh, greatest common factor, I could actually work backwards and do some multiplying. Notice these answers down here all have a number out front. That's the GCF that they're talking about, the greatest common factor. Uh, multiplying by a big ugly expression here. It's just two big ugly numbers multiplying. And so one thing I could do is I could try multiplying these guys back together and see which one of them uh, gave me, if any, give me this original expression. Let's give it a try. So I'm gonna try multiplying this out. Now remember, multiplication passes out over parentheses. That's a skill that we should know. It's known as the distributive property. So three times four x to the fifth would be 12 x to the fifth. And now I'm going to multiply 3 times the next term by t positive 10x squared. I'll get positive 30x squared. And now I'll multiply 3 times negative 2x, and I'll get negative 6x. And I can in see indeed that that one checked. Let's see if any of the other ones check. Let's try the next one. Uh, 3x squared. So 3 times 4 is 12. I'm taking this 3x squared and I'm passing it out to this 4x cubed. If I have 2x's multiplying, that's what x squared means, and then an, multiply by another 3x's, 2x's multiplying, and times that by another 3x's, I will have a total of 5x's multiplying. So I do get 12x to the fifth. Let's multiply it by that next expression. 3x squared times positive 10x would give me positive 30 x. Now look, here I had two x's. Oh, it's hard to read. Let me erase that. Okay, here I had two x's multiplying already. And now as I multiply this by this expression right here, I am, have another x multiplying. Two x's multiplying, another x, and that gives me a total of three x's multiplying, or x to the third power. And so this guy already has given me um, an incorrect Look, I needed 30x squared and I got plus 30x cubed. Um, I don't need to keep multiplying to see that this one is not going to work for me. But if I did, I'd see I'd get negative 6x squared. It's still not working. Okay, so that one didn't work when I multiplied it out. Let's try the next one. 6x times 2x to the fourth. No, 6 times 2 is 12. And 1x multiplying with another 4x's gives me a total of 5x's multiplying. 
Now let's pass 6x out to my next term, positive 5x. A 6 times 5 is positive 30, and x times x is x squared. And then I will multiply 6x by my last term, negative 1, and I'll get negative 6x. This guy also checks 12x to the fifth power, plus 30x squared, minus 6x. This is a possibility. Now let's try the la last one. 6x times 2x to the fourth would give me 12x uh, to the fifth, so 1x and another 4x's, plus 6x times 5x would give me 30x squared. Okay, now that guy only had two terms, passed out two times, I'm done. Obviously this one doesn't match. So I'm left to A or C. Both A and C are factored versions of the original expression. But look what I was supposed to do. I was supposed to factor out the greatest common factor. Take a look at this one. This one I just pulled out a 3. Take a look at this one. This one I pulled out a 6x. I've definitely pulled out a greater common factor. C is the correct answer here. C is the correct answer here. Now, I'm done with my cheat method here, but um, for those of you who did not like my cheat method and want to just go straight to factoring, I'll do that real quickly for those of you who haven't tuned out yet. So let us clear this little screen here. Okay, so you say, Kate, I don't want to do it the long way and do all that multiplying, the long, slow, easy way, I call it. I want to just go straight to the factoring. Okay, here we go. If I wanted to factor out the greatest common factor, the first thing I would do is consider the three numbers. What is the biggest number, uh, the greatest common factor of 12, 30, and 6? Well, yes, all those three numbers are on the three times tables, but they're also all on the six times tables. And six is greater than three, so I could pull out a six. Okay. Now, notice the um, variable portion of these numbers, of these terms. Every single one of these terms has an x. Now, what's the largest number of x's that I could divide out of all of them? This guy has five x's multiplying. This guy has two x's multiplying. But this guy only has one x. And so he only has one x to spare. So the greatest number of x's that they have in common is just one. So I could pull out that six x. And now we would actually do the division. We're going to take that 6x out of each one of those three terms. Let's give it a try. So 12 divided by 6, of course, would be 2. If I had 5x's but I divided 1 out, I would have 4x's left. Okay, now, so just like with multiplication, division also passes out. So now, I will m divide that 6x that I'm pulling out from the 30x squared, from the 30x squared. So 30 divided by 6 is positive 5. And if I had two x's multiplying and I divided out one of them, I would end up with a, with a single x. And now here, negative 6 divided by 6 is negative 1. And if I had an x and I divided that x away, it would be gone. And so there's no x's left in that last term. And that is how I would factor out a greatest common factor. I would first decide what the greatest common factor was, 6x. Then I would divide it out of each of the terms in the expression. Great. So either way you do this problem, you can see the answer is still C. C. <laughs> Great. If you have any questions about this or any other GED topic, be sure to drop them in the comments.